So five months ago, there we were, in Pyeongchang, South Korea, about to take on our arch rivals Canada for the gold medal in the Olympics. It's a game we will never forget. Monique scores the tying goal with six minutes left in regulation, and Jocelyn scores the game-winning goal in the shootout. <laughs> then, Maddie Rooney stops the final Canadian shot. Victory, and then chaos. <laughs> Rushing onto the ice into a dog pile with our teammates, gold medals being hung around our necks, the national anthem being played as the American flag is raised in front of us. A perfect, thrilling moment of a lifetime. Everyone wants to know, what were we thinking? Sure, all the obvious stuff. All the hard work we had put in, all the sacrifices we had made, all the love and support from family and friends. Our chest swelling with pride in representing our country, our home state, and town, becoming the first ever North Dakotans in history to bring home a gold medal. <laughs> But surprisingly, we were thinking more about the year before, when we were engaged in the fight of our lives with our hockey careers literally on the line. But more on that later. Growing up, Joss and I weren't exactly leading candidates for the normal Ray role in the battle for gender equity in women's hockey. We <laughs> grew... <laughs> we grew up with four older brothers, there were six of us born in a five-year span. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> we followed our brothers everywhere. If we wanted to play hockey with them, we had to be good enough to keep up. And if we went into the house crying, our mother would tell us, if it was with your brothers, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> there were no girls hockey teams, so we played with and against boys for most of our childhood. That was our normal, and we loved it. When we went away to boarding school, Shattuck St. Mary's, the girls' teams received all the same opportunities as the boys' teams. It wasn't until we went to college and started our careers on the national team that we started to see and feel the painful inequities that confronted girls and women in amateur hockey. So standing on the medal podium halfway around the world, our minds drifted back to our reluctant decision after a few years of fruitless negotiations with USA Hockey, battling for more equal treatment. We even took the giant step of threatening to boycott the 2017 World Championships and potentially forfeit any chance of playing in the Olympics. A year ago, we were looking at a different type of clock. Not one on a scoreboard, but one on the wall inside of a boardroom. A group of young women sitting across the table from the male leaders of our governing body. Our goal seemed so simple and logical. Equitable treatment. It was 2017. Who could say no to equity? And there were a lot of equity issues at stake. Big issues like more fair compensation so that we could afford to play hockey year-round and represent our country as elite hockey players. Like more equal financial support for girls hockey across the country. Like more equal support to promote the visibility of women's hockey. There were also little issues. One small issue was the perfect metaphor for how unfair inequity could be. Every time a team wins a world championship, every player should receive a ring. Boys and men got their rings reliably and quickly, but we had won five world championships and only received one ring. I know, I know, it's just a ring. But those rings stood for a lot. They were a constant reminder of what we had fought for on the ice 
and what we would continue to fight for outside of the arena. Three days before the World Championships began, finally, we came to an historic four-year agreement with USA Hockey. We didn't get everything we asked for, but we got fair compensation, more equitable support as compared to the men, more visibility, and more support for girls' hockey programs. With the negotiations behind us, we all scrambled to get to Michigan for the World Championships. We only had time for one practice and then went on to defend our gold medal, setting up our 2018 Olympics journey. The path to the 2017 World Championships is one of the most stressful things we had ever been through. But there were two things that helped us power through the difficult negotiations. We had the absolute conviction we were right, and we had the steadfast belief that we had to stand up for the next generation of girls playing hockey. Sure, there were short-term potential gains for us, but we knew we had to stand up for the girls who weren't on the national team yet. Girls dreaming of playing in the Olympics, eight years from now, 12 years from now, girls we didn't even know, like the ones who introduced us today. And in the end, we succeeded because we all hung in there together, even when USA Hockey tried to break our boycott. And not just 23 players on the national team, virtually every female hockey player old enough to play in a world championship. We all stood together in solidarity. It <laughs> It felt like every female hockey player in the U.S. was with us, all determined to address the painful inequities that were somehow considered normal, even okay, in amateur hockey. Our agreement with USA Hockey has laid the groundwork for some big change, and some of it is already happening. There has been real equalization of pay, and some money is now being spent on girls' hockey programs. Progress is being made. I don't even think we really realized what we had accomplished as we all rushed to get to Michigan for the World Championships. We were just too close to it, and it hadn't really sunk in yet. But as we skated onto the ice for the first time in Michigan, we saw all of these girls in the stands holding up signs, congratulating and thanking us for standing up for them, for being bold. But it wasn't just the reaction at Worlds that made us realize we had struck a chord. As we toured around the country after the Olympics, we ran into countless girls, and boys too, with their parents, their thanks, often with tears in their eyes, just blew us away. And the mail and social media messages, messages were almost too many to count. But at the top of the list was a note we had received from a young girl named Avery, the young daughter of Aaron and Dave Haxtell, who happens to be the head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers and former head coach of the University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux hockey team. We actually knew Avery, had even babysat her a few times. <laughs> she was a huge hockey fan and quite the young hockey player herself. She sent us a newspaper clipping from the negotiations along with a note that read, I think it's really cool what you guys are doing. You're standing up for girls everywhere. Thank you so much. Avery was only 11, but she totally understood what the whole struggle was all about. Standing up for the inequitable treatment of girls and women, making the case that inequity was not okay. Remember the note? How could we ever forget? It drives home that the real value of our gold medals is the platform that it gives us to continue to fight for progress on gender equity issues that are so important to us. Striving for success in hockey or in life is hard enough without facing discriminatory barriers, large or small. From unequal pay and support to getting championship rings. A hockey game has three periods, 
maybe an overtime, and sometimes even a shootout. But the game does end. For example, our game against Canada in Pyeongchang ended. And we won Olympic gold. It was exhilarating, a dream come true, and something we will never forget. And our negotiations with USA Hockey ended. Our agreement with USA Hockey is important, but it is only the beginning. It's not the end. So we're hoping that our hockey story sets an example bigger than hockey and bigger than sport. Equality should be the norm, and until that happens, our work is not done. So our struggle for fairness and equity for women and for girls in hockey and life has not ended. It goes on. So we're staying on the ice until we know that girls like Avery get equal treatment with her male friends. We're not unlacing our skates until we know that our future daughters, nieces, and gold medal winning teams are getting their championship rings. So we're staying on the ice to continue to pursue our equity goals and hope that you will join us. Even if you can't skate. <laughs>